Tori and Kyle are a couple who have been trying to have a child for a while, and they tried every many ways that exists, but haven't been successful. One night, Tori feels something vibrating from a distance, and a huge tremor shakes the house. The couple sees something has exploded and is glowing red near their barn, so they hurry outside to investigate. Shortly after, a video montage shows Tori and Kyle raising a young boy named Brandon. The couple is excited to have their dream come true, and they ensure that Brandon gets everything he desires. One morning, Tori enters Brandon's room to prepare him for school. The boy is now approaching teenhood and has a great relationship with his parents. Tori finds Brandon missing and concludes that he is hiding. The two love playing hide and seek, with the hider whistling to notify the seeker where to go, and Tori finds him hiding in the barn. The two meets with Kyle, who wants Brandon to stay away from the barn. He explains that some floor structures are weak, and the boy could fall and break his neck or step on an uncovered nail. At school, Brandon's teacher asks him the difference between a wasp and a bee. Brandon gives the correct answer, but he keeps talking about bees and wasps, as he is knowledgeable and academically gifted. This makes a class bully insult him, but another classmate, Caitlin, tells Brandon not to worry, as smart people rule the world. Tori is painting something that night, when she hears a strange vibration hit the house again, but she ignores it and continues painting. The vibration comes from the barn where something glows red but is concealed underground by wooden doors. A strange sound comes from the device, causing Brandon to have a seizure. Suddenly, he wakes up and leaves his bedroom through the window. Tori sees Brandon going into the barn and follows him. She is horrified to find him kneeling by the wooden doors and speaking a foreign language. She touches Brandon, awakening him from the trance-like state. She takes him back to the house and puts him in bed while singing him a lullaby. One day, Brandon wants to mow the lawn, but the lawnmower doesn't start. Frustrated, Brandon throws the lawnmower, getting surprised when he throws it way further with little strength. Brandon and his mother play several games at the arcade on his 12th birthday. They then join Kyle and the family's couple of friends, Noah and Merrily. Merrily is Tori's sister and the counselor at Brandon's school. After singing a birthday song, Brandon blows off the candle and makes a wish. Noah gives Brandon a gift, which Brandon uncovers to find a rifle. However, Kyle grabs the rifle, saying that Brandon is not ready to handle weapons. Brandon is very angry, and he demands that Kyle give him back the rifle. When Kyle refuses, Brandon smacks the table, causing several TVs to go off. Kyle apologizes to the patrons in the arcade and demands that Brandon get up as they are leaving. Kyle decides to take Brandon out on a fishing trip, seeing as the boy is still upset over what happened at dinner the previous night. In the morning, Tori asks Brandon to pack his heavy coat, but he doesn't respond. Kyle walks toward Brandon and finds him trance-like, chewing on a fork. Surprisingly, the fork doesn't harm the boy's mouth. Before leaving, Tori and Kyle find several magazines under Brandon's mattress. Later, Kyle talks to Brandon on the hunting trip, but Brandon sees some disturbing pictures of the human digestive system. Kyle explains a few things about puberty, saying Brandon can always reach out if he has trouble with anything. Later that night, Tori is woken up by a cold breeze. The family is sleeping in a tent, but Tori finds Brandon missing. At the same time, Caitlin is woken by some music playing on her laptop. She turns it off, but the music plays again after she turns around to go to bed. Caitlin sees her window open and sees Brandon lurking behind the curtains. She screams for her mother, but Brandon is long gone by the time her mother enters the room. Meanwhile, Tori looks for Brandon, and he appears, saying that he was relieving himself. Brandon has not only super strength, but also flight and invulnerability. Tori shares the weird mood swings and the disturbing photo incident with Merrily. She wonders whether Brandon should see a therapist. Merrily assures her that it is normal for boys to undergo various changes as they approach puberty. The two sisters part ways, and Tori finds Brandon sketching something in his book. She asks him about this, but Brandon puts away the book quickly and offers no explanation. Later that evening, Kyle is putting away the rifle Noah had got Brandon when he hears his chickens making a lot of noise. He thinks a wild animal is attacking the chickens, so Kyle grabs a rifle and approaches the coop. He is shocked to find Brandon standing still, watching the chickens jump around in fear. Kyle asks Brandon if he is okay and then takes him back to the house as it is past his bedtime. Some hours before sunrise, Kyle hears some strange night and rushes toward the barn. He is horrified to see all his chickens viciously slaughtered. Kyle wakes Tori and tells her what happened. Tori thinks a wolf is behind the slaughter, but Kyle mentions the broken lock and the open gate. 
He fears that Brandon was behind the incident, as he had found him staring at the chickens earlier. Tori looks at Kyle as if he is crazy, refusing to believe what he says. At school, the teacher instructs the students to play a game of trust, where a classmate falls on another. The other student is expected to hold the classmate, ensuring they don't fall. When it is Bandon's turn, he falls on Caitlin, but she gets out of the way, causing him to fall with a thud. The teacher asks Caitlin to apologize and help Brandon get up. Caitlin refuses, accusing Brandon of being a stalker. This angers Brandon, who yells that the accusation is not true. Caitlin is forced to help him, or she will fail the class. As Caitlin grabs Brandon's hand, he crushes and breaks her fingers. Tori and Kyle are summoned to the school following the incident. Caitlin's mother, Erica, is very angry and wants the sheriff to arrest Brandon. However, the principal opts to suspend Brandon, and after the suspension, Brandon will attend mandatory counseling sessions to manage his temper. Erica continues complaining while Tori looks at Brandon, wondering whether Kyle's accusations might be true. Her attention is drawn back to Erica, who wonders whether Tori found out who Brandon's biological mother is. Tori says she is the mother and mocks Erica for finding peace in insulting a child. At home, Kyle talks to Tori about Brandon. He reminds her that Brandon has never bled, broken a bone, or gotten sick since they got him. Kyle says that Brandon may look like a human, but he doesn't belong on Earth. Shortly after, Brandon is sleeping in his room when he mutters something in an alien language. He gets up and sleepwalks to the barn. Tori sees Brandon walking out in the rain and follows him. She finds Brandon floating over the glowing red light while speaking a foreign language. Tori runs to Brandon, causing the red light to end, and Brandon falls inside the barn hole. Brandon hits something and cuts his hand, bleeding for the first time. Tori hugs Brandon and comforts him. Brandon asks Tori who he is, and Tori finally tells him the truth. She explains that Brandon wasn't adopted as they had told him. Instead, he crashed into the Earth in an alien spaceship, the object that had been emitting the red light. Tori and Kyle found him as an infant and decided to adopt him and raise him like a human child. She explains that they love him very much, and he has been a blessing to them. However, Brandon pushes Tori aside, screaming at her for lying to him. He walks out of the barn and repeats the foreign words he has been trying to translate. Now, the words come to him, and he realizes he's supposed to take the world. His eyes glow red, and he screams, causing laser beams to shoot out of his eyes. Meanwhile, Caitlin is typing on her laptop when it starts to malfunction. Brandon appears before her again, telling her he has learned he is special. He wants to be with Caitlin, as she is one of the few people who see his potential. Caitlin tells Brandon that they cannot hang out, since her mother will not let her. Brandon assures her that everything will be taken care of soon. Her mother, Erica, is at the restaurant, finishing up for the day, when she sees the lights flickering. She turns to look at the eating area and finds the windows have been frosted and a symbol drawn all over. The lights continue flashing and Erica looks at the overhead lights. Suddenly, the bulbs break and glass shards fall on her face. She removes the shard and sees a figure lurking in the shadows. She cannot see well since her left eye is bloodied, but she senses that someone is trying to attack her. Erica grabs a bat and starts swinging blindly, but doesn't hit the attacker. She runs into the storage room and locks herself inside, but the attacker cuts through the metal door. Erica covers up her bloodied eye and sees that the attacker is Brandon, who is wearing a mask and a cape. A few seconds later, Brandon attacks. The following morning, the sheriff learns of Erica's disappearance. Brandon has to attend the mandatory counseling sessions with Merrily. At the session, Brandon says he knows that he is special, and while he considers Kyle and Tori as his parents, he knows he is much superior to them. Merrily is disappointed in Brandon's words, as it appears he has not made any progress and is not feeling sorry for attacking Caitlin. In the evening, Noah and Kyle share a few drinks while playing pool. Noah excuses himself, refusing Kyle's offer to drive him home. Meanwhile, Merrily is waiting for Noah when someone knocks on her door. She opens it, surprised to see Brandon. The boy apologizes for coming there so late, but he wants Merrily to lie to the sheriff about his progress. Brandon says that doing the opposite will not be good for anyone. His words make Merrily feel scared, and she asks him to leave. Brandon then says he will walk home. Shortly after, the alarm goes off as the motion detectors detect someone in the backyard. Merrily investigates, but the lights are not working, so she goes back into the house. She texts Noah, saying she is going to bed. As Merrily sleeps, Brandon is shown wearing a mask in the house. 
He goes toward Merrily, but Noah gets in the house, so Brandon hides in the bathroom. Noah feels the wind blow in the bathroom and walks into the closet to find Brandon standing there. Noah removes his mask and drags him outside, calling him a weirdo and wondering why he was hiding in the closet wearing a creepy mask. Noah threatens to tell Brandon's parents, causing Brandon to wear the mask and throw Noah into the garage door. He runs away, but Noah gets in his truck and starts looking for him. Noah finds Brandon floating in the middle of the road. The boy uses his power to turn off the car and then lifts it up and drops it, causing Noah's jaw to get dislocated by the steering wheel. As he holds it in position, Brandon approaches him and removes his mask. He stretches his hand and takes some of the blood dripping from Noah's mouth, using it to carve a symbol on the wall. Meanwhile, Tori and Kyle are worried since Brandon hasn't returned home. But when Brandon comes home, he is shirtless. He explains that he ruined his shirt playing soccer with a few friends, and the game was so interesting that he didn't notice it was getting late. Tori asks to take the shirt, but Brandon refuses. That night, Kyle has a nightmare regarding the first night they rescued Brandon. In the morning, Tori and Kyle learn about Noah's freak accident. They meet merrily at the mortuary, and she asks if Brandon got home safely. At home, Tori tells Brandon about Noah's death, but he doesn't react. Kyle then asks Brandon what he was doing at Noah's house the previous night. Brandon says he would never hurt Noah as he loved him. However, Kyle keeps asking questions about stalking Erica's disappearance and whether Brandon is lying about anything else. Brandon excuses himself, but Kyle grabs him, causing the boy to forcefully throw him against the wall. Later, Kyle finds the shirt Brandon wore the last night stained with blood. Meanwhile, Brandon comes in and Kyle apologizes for treating him harshly earlier. He then shows Tori the shirt, but she refuses to believe it, saying Kyle feels guilty for not driving Noah home. Meanwhile, when looking over Noah's Dracidans photos, the sheriff sees a symbol similar to the one he saw in the restaurant, where Erica disappeared. In the morning, Kyle decides to take Brandon hunting, hoping that this will help them be as united as they were before. They get to the woods just as the sheriff arrives at Tori's house. The sheriff shows her the symbol and asks if she recognizes it. He thinks the symbol is a signature for BB, as in Brandon Briar. However, Tori insists she has not seen the symbol and denies the sheriff entry to her house. After the sheriff leaves, Tori rushes into Brandon's bedroom and retrieves his notebook. She is horrified to find the signature all over his notebook. She also finds various pictures with several referring to the murders he has committed. Another picture shows Brandon in a costume. He has risen above Earth and is destroying it with his eye laser beam. Back in the woods, Brandon is looking at something when Kyle shoots him in the head. Sadly, the bullet does not harm him, but he feels the impact. Brandon turns around and looks at his father, feeling betrayed. Kyle runs away and Brandon chases after him with hate in his eyes. Eventually, he catches him. Kyle begs for mercy, but Brandon burns him to death. Tori calls Kyle's phone to warn him about Brandon, but the boy picks up. Tori is horrified as she realizes that Brandon is coming for her next. She asks him where he is, and Brandon says he is at home. Brandon is seen floating above the house, and he crushes the phone. Tori calls 911, but Brandon starts destroying the house before she can explain what is happening. Tori tries to hide, but Brandon continues his attack. The 911 operator calls the sheriff, telling him about the distress call. The sheriff and his deputy get to Tori's house. He calls out for her, and she runs to meet him. Suddenly, Brandon crushes the sheriff against a house boulder, eliminating him. The deputy asks Tori to get in the house and hide while she tries calling in for backup. The radio doesn't work, but the deputy spots Brandon standing outside the house. Tori is hiding under the bed when she hears Brandon attacking the deputy. Then her deformed body is thrown near Tori. Brandon whistles the way he and Tori would when they were playing hide and seek. He checks under the bed but doesn't find her. It turns out that Tori has hung onto the window's ledge. Unfortunately, Tori loses hold of the ledge and falls down, injuring her leg. She also gets a cut on her hand making her remember the time Brandon had cut his hand on the spaceship medal. She hurries to the barn with Brandon chasing after her. She touches the spaceship, accidentally turning it on. The lights make her see Erica's mutilated body hanging on the wall, in a similar way to that shown in the pictures she had found under the mattress earlier. She screams but continues trying to get something to use as a weapon against Brandon. Tori manages to get a shard of metal and pockets it. She then runs outside and calls out for Brandon. When he comes to her, Tori explains the joy she and Kyle felt when they found him in the woods. She had always vowed to protect him 
and she promises him that she will continue to do so. Tori believes that Brandon has some good in him, and the boy confesses that he wants to be good. Tori hugs Brandon and retrieves the metal shard, saying Brandon will always be her son. However, Brandon holds Tori's hand, stopping her attack in midair. He looks at her angrily and screams, carrying her above the earth. He then drops her and grabs a passenger jet, crashing it into the house. The FBI comb through the scene, hoping to find out why the airplane crashed, and there is a signature on one of the airplane's walls. Meanwhile, reports about the accident are broadcast, with Tori and Kyle being said to have perished as a result. The couple is said to be survived by their son, Brandon. Shortly after, Brandon causes havoc in the city, destroying buildings, starting devastating fires, and leaving his signature in a field. Then, a conspiracy theorist says that Brandon is an alien, and he compares these attacks to several ones that have happened all over the world. 